Greetings viewers and welcome back, Red Rupee here with another Replay Tuesday and of course by my side, none other than Deckard. How are you doing tonight, Deckard? I am doing excellent. We've got a first, our first 2v2 match Yeah, there's a lot all. of dropships on the screen right now. A lot of dropships and uh, it just so happens this is a special 2v2 for all of you. We've got QA versus Dev of Sparky Pan Studios. I'm rooting for QA myself, I don't know about you. I believe uh, I'm rooting for QA as well, considering... I know casters are. are supposed to stay unbiased, but, uh, you know, sometimes you gotta stay true to your loyalties. That's right. Anyways, let's see what we've got coming out into the dropships here on these loadouts. Looks like we've got double lapse generator for seafood gumbo and cloning laser for whispers. Those are our two QA testers, and then Anton and Stone Cold, we've got flamethrowers and atomic welder. And what's Steve? And he's oh, and he's got uh, napalm canisters. Now, what what kind of build? This is a burner build that you called it. Uh, yeah, Flammer it's kind of, kind of yeah, kind of burnination, I guess. Uh, he's got atomic welder. He's got napalm canisters. He's got flamethrowers. He's got pyroclastic molding. So all he's going to be all about getting the stacks of slags down on his opponents, so he can get the heals. He can get the bonus armor. He can get that bonus damage off the flamethrowers, which I've been seeing so much of recently. And uh, Seafood Gumbo and Whispers, they've got uh, ECM locks on both teams. So they're yeah, probably they going to be looking to lock down a lot of these attacks. Yeah, they have two, two lanes equipped with ECM locks, both Vice and then Plutus also has the inhibitor field. So uh, looks a little rougher, Anton and Stone Cold, out of the gates, considering that most of their build, most of their loadout is, uh, is based on attack damage. They don't really have much in the ways of ability damage, so a lot of that could get shut down. And uh, before we get too deep into this, let's take a look at the at the 2v2 map real quick. If you can see on the bottom left here, there are actually six vision towers. There are three up top here, and then three on the bottom as well. Uh, everybody's all over the place. A couple other small differences. Uh, Hive Buster requires three level three hives to earn that now, as opposed to just the single one. And, uh, and Alpha Strike remains the same. Yeah, Alpha Strike does remain the same. Oh, we, looks like the blue team's actually just going for a boss right out of the gate here. With six rigs, you can take a boss way quicker and uh, without taking much uh, residual damage either. So a boss lane in the first minute and a half of the game. And that attack buff applies to all six uh, rigs of, the, of that one team. So that is definitely a, a bonus that you want to get early if you can because now you'll have the upper hand and look at these, these are the, the Kavash goons that you can summon from a hive with Lapse Generator. And because Seafood Gumbo has two of them and they're level one uh, gear, they're, you're able to just get four, two, two and two. So you have four Kavash soldier goons ready for you, uh, to fight for you. Yeah, it's almost, it's like there, there's going to be so many units on the field potentially because once these two summoners each hit level three, they can get six Kavash each. So he can have 12 Kavash in addition to the six rigs on their team, so it's not a lot of damage, but when you have 12 of them, it builds up. A couple points, or a couple cores have been dunked, one for each side now, both players kind of juking around the uplink area, which is a bit larger in 2v2, as you can see, the whole map is, everything's a little bigger here. Knockout still charging ahead here, trying to get that kill on the recon, but getting perilously low, and General Vex right almost dying, pulling away at the last second, but Vanguard locked down with ECM locks, or no, inhibitor field, apologies, and she's gone. And also, she was killed with cloning laser. The nice thing about cloning laser is that if the hit, the final hit is taken from that cloning laser, the rig's death will produce a, another cloning laser in its place. Yeah, the laser will in fact clone itself, so if you start falling behind that team fight, you have to be very careful. Oh, they're, oh, they're really discounting down. these turrets here. Oh my gosh, why did Vice stand there? He was on the way out. Now the cloning lasers, there's three lasers firing away. Look at all the lasers on the field right now. Hold on, there's one, two, three, there's, there's five, five, cloning five cloning lasers, lasers and five rigs down for the red team right now. QA pulling ahead now, or at least evening the score at two to two after that initial wacky team fight. Now we're, look at this army of Kavash that are spawning down here. This is ridiculous. Yes, both, uh, let's see, we've got level three Plutus. Level 3, General Vex just grabbed that third level. Vice kind of dropped Micro down here on this vision tower, trying, trying to make to sure that uh, that total vision doesn't fall into the clutches of the red team, the and, dev team. And here comes Whispers Vice taking uh, shots at Vanguard. Inhibitor field going down, missing Vanguard. Look at all these goons! Yeah, Vanguard just saw that coming and she said, no thank you. She's heading back to the dropship to Vanguard gather her wits about her. 
Because I think that's the first time she's seen Kavash fighting alongside of enemy rigs. And it looks like Team QA is pushing for that TV, that total vision. They're getting the, the southern east vision tower, and they just need this, uh, the northern east vision tower, and they've got it. Yeah, it looks like we do have a little interference coming in with Turbine there. Knockout uploading still trying to keep the score relatively even. While they're looking for maybe a couple alphas, you can see it's uh, Seafood Gumbo down here trying to maybe steal an alpha. There are still only six hives on this larger map, so getting alpha strike still requires you to get all the alphas from three of your hives, and if a couple alphas are stolen, you have to start invading on the enemy side. Uh, Tank and Turbine hanging out up here, Vice and Turbine facing off in the middle of the map. Vice just barely going to get that upload. Meanwhile, down bottom, let's see. Oh, Vice just a destroyed. moment too late on that upload. And Pressure from Anton and Stone Cold, but they cannot put up with this this army of Kavash goons and, and Plutus going back for the cores. Vanguard and Widget retreating for health. It's not looking good. They oh, they really already have score. They don't really have a lot of AOE damage, which gives them, yeah, look, see, here comes Knockout with that pressure field, or shredder field, and, uh... But, uh, Re Re Reconstructive Maneuver took both, he's got Reconstructive Maneuver on both I believe he Plutus does, and yeah. General Vex, so he just blinked forward and uh, repositioned himself to get a better angle on, on, uh, who was it? It was Knockout. Uh, knockout. Yeah, Knockout did a good job of taking out. It does take a long time to build up all those Kavash, so if you can kind of get in there with a Shredder Field or some sort of AoE or Rocket Cluster, you can you can take out those Kavash pretty easily, and then those summoners are going to be largely ineffectual, at least for the time it takes them to get back onto the field. And the Kavash goons do have a timer of their own. They are not uh, bound by just their HP alone. So if you are uh, confronted with a, l a large army of them, you can retreat and uh, think of another way to combat them. So the blue team you can see right now, now all, already up to six alphas to just the two of the reds. The red team is up by two points, but they're starting to put some pressure on total vision and try to keep ahead on that core count. If they can just continue to do that, even if the alpha strike goes down for the blues, it's all only going to even the game up and make things a little tighter. So as of right now, it's, I don't know, it's still anyone's game. Blue team heading into the center and force the red team not quite gathered up though. They have to be careful how they engage here. Oh, inhibitor field going down plus si uh, silence. Oh my gosh, yeah, silence and inhibitor field leaving these rays completely defenseless. And oh, now Vanguard is going down. Knockout coming in with Shredder field bringing Widget's dead. It's Plutus too much, is about though. to die. Plutus, Plutus survives. Oh my gosh. That was a little brazen from Knockout to go in against all that. I understand you want to get that Shredder Field in there to break those Kavash, but I think he should have waited. Especially for because his ally. Shredder Field gives you an armor reduction. Exactly. That's you have you have all those units blasting away auto attack damage at you while you have that armor reduction down. And it is now nine points to seven. Seafood Gumbo and Whispers are catching up. They are up by one squad level as well. The tides could be turning here. Yeah, I think that was just kind of a misplay on Stone Cold's part. He was feeling a little brazen, thought he could take that team fight, but now he's in a landfall coming in. Not gonna stop the upload in time. Vice just tanking that damage. Cortex and Vice going after Seafood Gumbo's Vice. Not gonna catch up. Yeah, Vice looks like he's gonna be just fine. There's not a lot of damage. This is the problem with this kind of uh, this kind of flame-heavy build is that I feel like his opponent wants to bring some CC or something like that, because none of these reads are fast. They can put out some serious damage and sustain, but you can kind of just walk away from it and choose to engage when and you're ready. And look at that! They they really know how to play their silence, their the no field and inhibitor field. That is silencing their uh, abilities and silencing uh, and stopping their ability for auto attacks. They're just dead in the water when both of those come down. Yeah, it's a, it's a really nasty combo. Uh, Pretty oh, much just gives Vice you, oh, trying wow. to escape with landfall. It doesn't make it. Dies mid-air. Cortex on the verge of death as well. But he gets the XP, the uh, Alpha Slay. Oh no, and a Reconstructive Maneuver came in. Turbine and Cortex both going down. That is a team wipe. It's now 12 to 7. This is not looking good for Anton and Stone Cold. Yeah, these summoners are level 4 and level 5, so they're nothing to scoff at at this point in the game. They always, they do start out very frail, but with all these Kavash running around, taking damage and doing that sort of thing, even with the inhibitor field now on the boss, buying tons of time, the boss, so long as you position the Kavash right, the boss will attack your, your, uh, summoned units instead of your rigs and allow you to kind of 
tank away that boss without feeling any of the impact there. And Anton and Stone Cold just haven't had the teamwork that Seafood Gumbo and Whispers have. You can see twice now we've seen two individual team fights uh, that haven't gone their way and kind of leaving them unable to answer and here to comes the six rigs on the field. Another boss slay from Seafood Gumbo at the at the south tower, a south boss pit. Yeah, you can see his General Vex is level five, so he can just immediately teleport to the south side or wherever he's needed now on this giant map. I think General Vex, her uh, ultimate, or her signature move rather, has a lot of versatility in this larger play style because you can kind of do a team fight or go out and farm and then jump right back to the uplink to support your ally or anything like that. And not just yourself, your signature move actually brings anybody in your uh, area of effect with that teleport. Yeah, so all she can bring her, well. her, her entire team and partner in the 2v2 match anywhere she wants if they're in range. So 14 to 12 right now. And Anton and Stone Cold just took Hive Buster. Alpha Strike was taken by Stone Cold and Anton as well, so they are catching up 14 to 12. They are behind on Vision Towers, though. Looks like Seafood yep. Gumbo and Whispers are looking to take the bottom, the southeast tower, and what? move up to the northeast tower. ECM lock's going down. That is an instant cast ability, so you can protect your own tank with it while you're uploading. Suddenly, though, there are rigs everywhere. Another teleport in, followed by a blink, leaving Turbine hurting pretty badly. Flamer's going down. Signature move from Plutus. Unbelievable. Cortex. Just on the brink of death, coming back with some regen, They're but he's... Trying. Oh! Plutus oh takes him out. Vice is going to make it home. Whispers yeah, Vice is, chased this, by Anton's Vice. This is the slowest Vice, Vice fight ever. Neither of them are going to be able to land a hit right there. Turbine got left behind, unfortunately. Microing too hard, forgetting that he had a rig on the back lines there, and unfortunately and, went down. And now we've got three cores on the map with a possible fight up here at the top. Vice having to retreat. Plutus maneuvering back in with Reconstruct and Maneuver. And the inhibitor field going down, land falling out for Vice to go back home and retreat to safety. And it's all quiet on the uplink now. It's 19 to 12 with only a few oh. minutes remaining. Because they captured vi total vision. We missed that at some point. Did yeah, I miss there's that? so much. There's so much going on on the on, on the 2v2 fights. There's normally a couple engagements plus battles going down for total vision as well. Sometime during that last encounter, there the the blue team managed to sneak total vision in. But, uh, but it's only going to require another core or two, and the game's going to be done. The red team needs to get down here. Oh, no. This could be it. The match won't end prematurely, but once you get 22 cores, the game is over. Orbital Strike going down. Landfall out of it just as an escape. But uh, even so, it's 22 to 12 right now, and you can see with all the cores... All the objectives done, there's only 9 cores remaining on the map, and 22 is the game point. That's right, 9 plus 12 is 21. Not gonna happen. That said, the red team doesn't care, they're gonna fight it out. They at least want some team fight victories. They need that blood. But uh, I don't I don't think they're gonna get it. I think, unfortunately for them, the blue team's competition oh, is just way better. Nice Maker going down there yeah. on that Vice. Oh, they're going Whispers to get Vice going down. Blood. Here come a bunch of uh, lapsed generator goons coming in. They're tanking away, but uh, the combined force of Vice and those two mechanics with their dual nanite amplifiers buying lots of time to farm farm up some extra heals Ooh, there. Melting Plutus away real fast. Turbine is level 5 too, and so he's getting all that bonus damage. He's got Core Hammer, he's got his Napalm Canisters, giving him bonus damage to anything that's lagged. This is just Vice a massive down. amount of damage for both teams. They know there's no hope in winning, but they just want to duke it out. Cloning laser going down, taking oh, out, back out during the landfall. Mid-flight, she gets a And look at that cute little plasma drone oh, just walking him. over. Click, click, click. It looks so innocent. <laughs> but uh, Whispers wow. doesn't care. She's just going to upload as many cores as she can yeah, to get the Jovian bonus. She wants, she, she wants those dollars. Those Jovians, dat money. I wonder so, what the Jovian dollar exchange rate is in the future. I'm not sure. I feel like the dollar has probably deteriorated so much <laughs> by this time in history that uh, it can't be worth much anymore. But let's see. I mean, so what? What? What do you think could have? Been, I think honestly, what should have happened uh, is is at the beginning. It's not something that people consider a lot yet, but especially with two v two, where you're each drafting individually. 
when you see that one of your opponents is going for a specific strategy, you kind of have to start building around that. Like, yeah, the draft is a really important part of the game, and it's not it's not often thought of quite yet at this stage. So, considering there are all these lap, there are two lap generators on the field. I would have expected to see some more AOE options coming down from the red team. but they Yeah, and I definitely don't think Shielded Actuators was a good choice for oh, Vanguard. No. Um, not that uh, Stone Cold knew what he was getting into because that was his first choice as well. But I, I think Shielded Actuators as a choice in general should have been saved maybe as last just to be sure what he was going for would, would be good against the opposing team's comp. Uh, comp. Yeah, I normally pick my tank first. I normally don't decide what I get on my gunner until my second or third pick. But uh, it's, it's all things you have to take into consideration. I also think that, as I mentioned before, the team fighting was just better on the blue side than the red. Oh my gosh, look, we come down here and it's just a swarm of Kavash. What is that, 12 Kavash? 12 Kavash running down three rigs along oh, with their allied rigs. Self body in blocked. Ah, oh, widget going down. There's just so much happening. Seven seconds left. They're not even going to make it back to their dropship. Oh. It's just a race for survival at this just point. The brutal. only one that made it back is Vanguard, and she might not even survive in her own. Oh, one wow. more second, and she would have been toast in oh, her own let's, home let's, base. Let's view the map real quick because look at, look that. at what, that. What health we got here? It's Six, 69. 69. There we go. And everybody but, else at a uh, good amount of health. Yeah, this was uh, definitely a bloodbath at the end there. QA gave no reprise. To the developers. That's kind of how it goes when the devs take on QA, and not to not to brag, but it's just not to uh, toot our own horn, but uh, <clears throat> that t that tends to be the what way happens. of things. Dev send of stuff, and we just. But uh, it was it was really close <laughs> right there towards the middle of the game when the red team did manage to steal Alpha Strike away. I didn't think they were going to be able to do that because the blue team was so far ahead on Alphas early on. But they uh they farmed the bottom half of the map really quickly. Suddenly, got they did. the hive buster, got the alpha strike, both right right next to That's each other. That's what's so nice about this graph. You can definitely take a look at it at a, at a glance and see just where the the game was going towards, and all of a sudden things start to flatten out, and then boom, yep. you can I mean, see you can a complete see this vertical. Big, this big this big team fight here opened up the gates for all yep. for total vision for about five core dunks, and from there there was just no return. Yeah, I definitely think you're. Uh, on point with with the lack of AOE was not doing them any good against all those Kavash goons and AOE attacks. And uh, and and those those lockdown abilities yeah, like lock, like ECM locks, ECM and, locks, uh, inhibitor field, and null field. How would you how would you compete against that? Yeah, that's really difficult in a team scenario because normally normally your ECM locks is maybe locking down you know one two three rigs if you place it just right. And like oftentimes. Your opponent isn't going to let a tank with ECM locks just get into the middle of their, their battle. But uh, but with landfall, with, you can... Yeah, it's really tricky. And if you're shutting down the DPS of five rigs in a team fight, that's huge. Uh, I think I think you might just want some mobility options to either get away from that or if you've got your own Shredder Field. Shredder Field's so dangerous, though. Uh, you, I, I think some sustain would have been better because they did, they, they did have these two Nanite amplifiers, but they didn't have any... They didn't. They didn't really have healing domes, or let's see. Did they have a widget? They had a widget, but it never really got. I saw a leveled. couple. I saw a couple healing domes. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just not a fan of Shredderfield uh, because of that armor reduction. Big team fight. Shredderfield is supposed to take out, do a lot of damage to yeah. a lot of people. But if you're surrounded, you're just going to be melted away. I think, I'm, I'm I a think... big fan of crumple panels for for those kind of cases because you really can't take those first five hits at max crumple crumple panel damage. That's true. Yeah, crumple panels is great. Uh, tricky though with the last generators though, because all you're gonna do is take a lot of those kavash hits. True. Those kavash will burn right through the crumple panels. I think so I think really you need a lot build. of long range stuff. You need more rockets, more how uh, mounted howitzers. Yeah, I mean the so the kavash themselves don't react as quickly to commands as rigs, so you can probably like lock them down. Maybe some roots and things like that to make it easier to yeah, approach the ground summoners. pounder would have been nice. Long range mm -hmm. root followed by a long range rocket cluster. Yep, you can at least eliminate the Kavash, and without those Kavash, the summoners themselves really aren't that much of a threat. Yeah, summoners are quite fragile, so um, definitely uh, Seafood Gumbo took advantage of that, that body wall, that, that meat wall of Kavash oh, yeah. to protect the weakness of the summoner. And right. the Reconstructed Maneuver, that would be a, a counter to the counter of long range, because you blink in... Your, your Kavash goons don't f blink in with you, but Inhibitor Field mm -hmm. and Null Field are going to be right there with you when you blink in, so 
definitely uh and i think if uh, that it's just another thing of like you're always trying to expend your opponent's resources right so like try to get them to commit to using ecm locks or their fields blow their cooldowns before you're you're actually committed to the fight then you can kind of back off reposition and go in while you still have all your advantages definitely but uh, I, if, if, if that didn't highlight the insanity of 2v2 and the potential, some more potential from these summoners, like, I don't, I don't yeah. know what'll, what'll make it happen for you. We saw, this match we saw was... Omnipresence used a couple times, we saw those Kavash, we saw the, the cloning lasers were out of that's, control. Yeah, that's what I was about to bring up. My favorite part was towards the beginning, those five cloning lasers, what a chain reaction of just rig destruction and cloning laser... Uh... What's the word I'm looking for? Spawning. Yeah. Cloning, I guess. <laughs> cloning, yeah. <laughs> but man, I mean, you can see the DPS on a cloning laser is 105, so that's that's the DPS of another rig on its own. So if you've got five of those on the field, it, if you lose a team, if you lose a rig in a team fight with cloning laser, you either have to take out those lasers right away or just back off. Because yeah, because it'll chain reaction. It'll, it'll cascade into another rig's death, another cloning laser, and then more and more DPS. It's like having another rig on the field. But... Yeah. Anyways, try out try out those builds. Try out two v two if you haven't. It's a lot of fun. It gets pretty ridiculous. But uh, that's the point. We want yeah, you to have fun. Yeah, that's the idea. It's it's not it's not necessarily supposed to be the perfect balance mode or anything like that. Two v two is more of a off the wall and it's the uh, it's the Marvel Capcom vs Street Fighter to the to Street Fighter <laughs> Alpha three. There you go. I like that. <laughs> Those of you in the fighting game community understand. If not, go look those games up and <laughs> check them out. Anyways, I think we're doing our usual post-game ramble, so we, we better cut ourselves much. off. Yeah. Definitely play 2v2. Send us those 2v2 replays. Send us those replays that have unique builds. We'll definitely watch them because we like seeing unique stuff. Yep, stop by the forums. Either submit your games or let us know what you think of these casts because we have, we have uh, threads up for both now. We have threads up for both, yes. Anyways, we're out of here. This is Red Rupee. This is Deckard. We're at Sparky Pants Studios. Hope you enjoyed Replay Tuesday. We'll catch you next time. See you later, Belters.